Hisham Sharaf, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Can I begin by asking you, what is your official title? I am the Foreign Minister of the National Salvation Government, which is a coalition between uh, the GPC, General People Congress, and Ansarullah the Houthis. And you accept, though, don't you, that the rest of the world doesn't consider you to be the foreign minister. They consider you to be part of a regime that lacks international legitimacy. No one recognizes your national salvation government. Yes, I do understand this. But I do represent my country. I represent 85 percent of the population who are living with us, who are dealing with us. I think this is enough for me okay. and anyone who would like to deal with this part of the world will deal with the de facto government established here in Sana. Uh, and you're right about the de facto government, although those 85 percent of the people didn't vote for you. Um, do you accept that Abdur Rabu Mansur Hadi is the legitimate president of Yemen under international law? As they specify under their international law, but according to the wishes and the constitution of the Republic of Yemen, he has resigned in the new arrangements for peace we will have our own election or our, our own arrange, arrangements to have a new president. Just to be clear, UN Security Council Resolution 2216 says he is the only legitimate president of Yemen, whether you like him or not. Um, you talk about peace. Your side of the conflict, the National Salvation Government of Yemen, which of course includes the Houthis, failed to attend the Geneva peace talks that were scheduled in September. Will you also be refusing to attend the upcoming UN peace talks in Sweden to try and end this horrific civil war, to try and end this Saudi-led bombing campaign? No. We have announced that we are going to Sweden for these uh, consultations in Stockholm. And what happened concerning Geneva was the obstacles or were the obstacles that was put by the other side. Our people were ready to go and I myself met them one night before they go or they were intending to go. Let's talk details. Muhammad Ali Al Houthi, a senior Houthi official, recently wrote an op ed for the Washington Post newspaper claiming that if the Saudi airstrikes stopped, there would be peace in Yemen. It sounds kind of simplistic, uh, vague even. What actually are you proposing from your side to end the war? We know what the Saudis are doing, but what is your side proposing to end this war? Okay, l uh, let me be very clear. Uh, when we asked for stopping the bombardment by the Saudis, we have really expressed our wish for peace by the same things they mentioned, that you guys stop your planes from coming to our airspace and bombing our people and killing them, and we will not send any of these ballistic missiles. This will be just a gesture to go ahead with other peace arrangement. It's not simplistic at all. The Saudis, a long time, say, stop the ballistic missiles, okay. withdraw from the borders, we can arrange something. Now we tell them, it's enough, is enough, let's go for peace, stop those planes from coming and killing our population. It's undeniably true that the Saudi-led coalition has killed most of the civilians in this war and bears greatest responsibility for the humanitarian crisis that's unfolded and may also have committed war crimes. And I asked a Saudi ambassador to the United Nations on this show about that. We've covered the Saudi role in this war extensively on Upfront. But the fact is that your side of the conflict, the Houthi-led side, has also been accused by the UN, by Amnesty International, by Human Rights Watch of serious human rights abuses, including blocking foreign aid, uh, torturing detainees, hostage taking, using child soldiers, shelling civilian areas. That's a pretty damning, pretty horrific indictment of your quote unquote government, isn't it? I will not call it indictment of our government or our authorities. During the wars, any war, Things happen, and as I said, we are open and transparent. We would like to see these things and correct any misdoings. We didn't say that we are clean 100%. Things happen during the war. So again, we are trying our best to limit any incidents that is coming from our side, but you are talking about planes that are throwing hundreds and thousands of tons of bombs on civilians. If you speak about us, the national salvation and our military, 
we are trying our best to limit any incidents of killing people or, as you said, recruiting but, but children. Human, but human rights groups don't agree with you. You say things happen as if it's some sort of accident yes. or natural disaster when Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, the UN, have documented over many months, not over days or weeks, over consistent pattern over many months of Houthi forces indiscriminately firing explosive munitions into residential areas, into markets, into houses, into civilian areas. How can you justify that? That's a violation of the laws of war. I mean, let me tell you something. I'm not coming here to justify as I said, any misdoings or any kind of an action that is hurting our population, we are ready to talk about it, investigate it, and check it. Anyone who did a mistake, we are going to punish them. But you are talking about a small fraction, a very small fraction of the killing that happened in our country. If we get, if we get 10 percent of that, the Saudis and their coalition is responsible for 90 percent of the killing in Yemen. I accept that the Saudi coalition is responsible for the majority of civilian deaths. That doesn't excuse the civilian deaths at the hands of Houthi forces. That doesn't excuse torture by the Houthi forces. That doesn't excuse shelling of civilian areas. Do you accept that point? Okay, let me uh, here say something. We are ready to receive those human rights groups to look to what's happening. What, how, how did it happen and how we can correct the course of the war against the aggression by which we avoid our population and not hit them or, as you said, uh, throw some rockets to them. But again, I say we are defending our country. We are not fighting our people. And what about the rockets fired into Saudi Arabia? A hundred rockets, according to some reports, into Saudi Arabia, into Riyadh, some of which have indiscriminately targeted residential areas, killed Saudi citizens, killed an Egyptian laborer. How is that not a war crime to target civilian areas in a neighboring country, no matter what they're doing to you? Let me correct it to you. It's 192 rockets and maybe more, not 100 rockets. So you're proud of the rockets you fired into Saudi Arabia? Oh, yes, we defend our country. If you would go to the story of this war, the first two years, we did not fire anything. We just were waiting to stop this crazy war. Then we did not find any response from the world. So we started defending our country by like shooting some rockets to that country. Now, the number that you mentioned about some Saudis who were hit or that Egyptian citizen, what's that number? Give it to me, and I can tell you that they killed 50,000 person in our country. They injured more than that number, and they and Minister, we've covered that on this show. Two wrongs. So I mean, don't when, compare sorry, I'm not comparing. You're the one comparing. Two wrongs don't make a right, Minister. I'm not defending the Saudi killing of civilians in Yemen. I'm asking you how you defend the killing of Saudi civilians. It's a simple question. Do you are you okay with killing Saudi civilians? Yes or no? Please, no, no, no. We don't consent to that. We don't consent to killing any civilian. It might happen by mistake, but we don't intend to kill the Saudis because they are not our enemies. Our enemy is the military, military planes. And if we have some rockets to shoot those planes, we would have done it. But we don't have them. OK. And one of the main reasons this war continues to rage on is because it's not just a Yemeni civil war. It's become a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And you're on the Iranian side, aren't you? The, Ir the Iranians back the Houthis and your national salvation government. That's a fact, isn't it? OK, speaking on behalf of the National Salvation Government, we have no dealing with Iran. I myself requested the Iranians sometime to provide us with anti-aircraft missiles. They didn't give it to us. I tell you, these Scud missiles, we have them 10, 20 years ago, and we modified something in them to defend ourselves. Everything in our country has been destroyed by the Saudis. So when we come and shoot one or 10 or 20 missiles to Saudi Arabia to show them we can defend our country. The whole world become a little bit a little bit worried. They should worry about those planes who kill people while they're asleep. We are trying to defend Yemen and we will use our weapons if this war does not stop. We would like to have peace, so let's go to peace. Peace is our aim. Hold on, Minister. So do you deny reports that suggest Iran has sent not just missiles, but military advisors to Yemen to advise your forces? Do you deny claims from Iran-backed Hezbollah commanders that they've been helping you launch those rockets into Saudi Arabia? Uh, as the foreign minister of the National Salvation Government, I deny that my government is dealing with Iran whatsoever. Whatsoever? There's, there are no Iranian military advisors on the ground in Yemen? 
I'm, I'm telling you, I'm the foreign minister. I visit a lot of places. I visit a lot of our commanders, and I don't see any Iranian advisors at the Ministry of Defense or any places or, I mean, any places that I visit. So those who are saying this, like Nikki Haley and like the others in the U.S., they should tell us where they are, and they should tell us how they did found about them. A Hezbollah commander named Abu Abbas told Foreign Affairs magazine that Hezbollah is already in Yemen. Quote, who do you think fires missiles into Saudi Arabia? It's not the Houthis in their sandals, it's us, he said. Is he lying? Okay, yeah, this guy is liable and responsible for what he has stated. But as I say, as a foreign minister of the National Salvation Government, we have nothing about that. And I have the Minister of Defense meeting with us in regular meetings. We did not talk about that. Okay, one of the other big problems in Yemen is not just outside intervention, but that everyone in Yemen seems to switch sides all the time. Your former boss, the late President Ali Abdullah Saleh, and the government you were part of fought six wars against the Houthis between 2004 and 2011. Then they teamed up with the Houthis to fight the Saudis, and then a year ago, uh, he ditched the Houthis, calling them reckless, and the late President Saleh got killed by them. Do you worry that if you disagree with your coalition partners, the Houthis, as well, they'll turn on you, too? Uh, let me tell you something. I'm serving in this government for the Republic of Yemen, not for the parties. So I'm serving my country, I'm defending my country, and I do this all the time. So when it comes about what happened in, uh, last year, we did not have all the facts yet. We did not have about the details of what happened. But again, as the GPC, we have the coalition with our brothers from the Houthi or the Ansarullah, and we will continue that until peace comes, and then we will know all the details. So, but did you approve of your brothers, the Houthis, killing your former boss, your former leader, Ali Abdullah Saleh? No. This is the chairman of our party, and some events happened, and we will know eventually what happened. But until now, I can tell you, we did not know what happened, and our party did not ask us for any withdrawal. So we are continuing with this national salvation government for the sake of the Yemeni people, not for the sake of parties. And one last question. Um, Yemen used to be divided between north and south. Uh, it's divided right now because of this ongoing war. Is the only chance for peace, is the only long-term solution to the conflict in Yemen to make that division formal, to bring back partition? Nope. In my opinion, as uh, Mr. Martin Griffith said, first, let's the UN special envoy. Yemen, and then let's look to the issue of the South. Now, what is in front of us is peace for Yemen, stop the war, lift the blockade, open Sana Airport, let the people move, and let the politicians talk. After we solve this issue of what's going on now, then we can look to any other major issues that is happening in our country. Anyone who wants to face the Iranians should go to the Strait of Hormuz, not to come to Sana'a or come to Aden or any other place in our country, the Republic of Yemen. Hisham Sharaf, thanks for joining me on Upfront.